Why is it that I've decided to run with Blackmagic cameras? Well, when you're first starting out in video production, you know, it's all a lot of fun when you get your first camera. So my first camera was, well, theoretically, my first camera before I even started all this was a Nikon D60, and I still have that and I use it. I have it in my office on display. It's kind of still usable. Battery doesn't work so much. But you know, you get obsessed with gear after a while. I started to buy gear for the feeling of buying gear and eventually realized that gear isn't everything you need. So when I revisited my photography passion a couple of years ago, I bought a, the very base, base, base model, Olympus OMD EM10 Mark I. That was the first camera that really got me rolling into what I'm doing now. And that was a base mirrorless camera no bells and whistles and I shot all sorts of events on it. I bought Olympus Micro Four Thirds glass and shot my first wedding on it. I shot all the school and church events in my community and just kind of started off there and learned to slowly build the kit and to reinvest into glass before bodies, the cameras, you know, making sure that it's kind of not overspending where I, where I didn't have to. When I decided to actually start freelancing, I made the decision at the time with the knowledge that I had to reset my whole camera system. I sold off all my Olympus cameras and lenses to my sister who actually, well, some of them to my sister who has actually started her own photography business since because of that, having those, that first piece of gear. And then I moved over to completely to the Sony a6500 and reinvested all of the money that I had into that and a few little lenses, the 30mm 1.4 and 16mm 1.4 Sigma. I still have that camera. It's actually my webcam at the moment that I use at the office. And for the first two years of freelancing, it was really, that's what I had. And I bought an a6300 to have a B cam handy and learn how to use the heck out of them because that was all that I had. I didn't have even a full frame body for another year. And because of that, it kind of taught me the value of pushing your camera to its very limit and finding out how you can, how you can use your camera in any situation, the pros and cons, and even in the editing and post-production, knowing how to shoot well in the camera to then push it as hard as you can in post. So I learned how to shoot with different picture profiles and push them to their limits in the, in a sense, learning things about dynamic range and color latitude, things that you only understand as you do it. By the time I made the decision last year to try uh, and borrow a friend's Blackmagic Pocket 4K and I made a few cool videos out of it and I didn't know how to use it. When I put that image into my computer and just literally flicked the default conversion light on it, I went, whoa, what is this image? And then when I started to tweak it, I went, this is insane. There's so much more flexibility in the image than I'd ever experienced because at that point I had also been renting and still have a Sony a7 III and I still had the a6500. And then I picked up after, it's pretty shortly after that, I kind of, not having a whole lot of cash to do so, I picked up my first pocket 4K camera. And together with another one that I picked up a few months later on, predominantly we've done a lot of, a lot of our work on the Blackmagic Pocket 4Ks. They've even taken us into the Hillsong productions we've done recently. And the stuff that's going online, it's unbelievable to think that the Blackmagic Pocket 4Ks have been capable of doing that. And even to this point today, I'm still using them where I can, obviously. In fact, they will just match up really nicely with this new, new camera. So why is it that I picked up a 6K? Well, there's some more productions coming up that we've got that are gonna require just another level of production. And that's the only reason. Otherwise, I would've been happy to stick with the 4Ks. We've know, I know how to push these to their limits to a degree. And I still don't know a lot about how to shoot them to their maximum potential. I've been shooting a lot of Blackmagic Raw, been learning how to edit it and teaching the team how to do so as well. So we love the image, especially when they updated the image to the Gen 5 color science. It just, it was another level. It just blew our minds how good a camera that is the body alone sub 2000 Australian dollars could be. And obviously we've had to rig it up to 
make sure that it's, you know, for technical reasons, make sure that there's enough weight and battery power, because obviously Blackmagic's are known to have terrible battery life. That all saying that the reason that it's time to pick this one up is because in my honest opinion, after doing months and months and months of research, I feel like this is another sweet spot camera. Again, all of these cameras are bought and picked up along the way. Honestly, the Panasonic GH4 back in the day, the A6500 from Sony, then the, then the A7 III, and, and then the Pocket 4Ks, even the R6, which we're renting at the moment, and the A7S III that's filming this video at the moment. All of those purchases and rentals have been, in my opinion, really good sweet spots on a technical level. They're not the best of the best of the best, but price to performance wise, I really believe that they're the best bang for the buck in their price range. And I think the same of the 6K Pro. At 3,500 Australian dollars for the body alone at the time of the purchase, the next level up to this like has to be at least $10,000 worth to be considered an upgrade. You know, we're talking about the Blackmagic Ursa G2, the 12K, or the Canon C70, which is kind of on a level playing field, to be honest. And so I've been learning throughout my whole journey because I started off doing freelancing and starting business without any extra capital, because everything has been reinvested into what we're purchasing and buying to make sure that every purchase, every decision is made with a really solid price to performance ratio. I really believe that image wise, you can't beat these for another couple thousand dollars in terms of the actual cameras. And at this point, honestly, of level of quality in the camera image that you get, I feel like you gotta just be better technically, like yourself. Your own DPing work, your own camera operation, lighting, and then editing as well. I feel like that's now the limit. Like, even with the 4Ks, to be honest, I feel like you could push those to some really serious productions before actually justifying a level up. And the level ups have honestly been, that I've required out of the 4Ks, the level ups have been inbuilt NDs, which 6K Pro now has you know, uh, a not micro four third sensor. So this is a Canon EF now. This now has, you know, it's still got the same beautiful science, color science behind it. It still has the same image that we're gonna really enjoy. And it also now shoots up to 6K, which is gonna be, mean more storage. But I guess all of that to say that I feel like this is now our new sweet spot. I'm excited to be able to take this on some projects and see how see what images we can come up with, what kind of productions we can take these on. And yeah, you know, it's really exciting considering, again, it's just another step in the journey, another step in leveling up the production quality to match what we're actually doing. There's no point, in my opinion, in upgrading gear just for the sake of upgrading gear. It's gotta actually help us to push to another level. And to be honest, it's, you know, it's a decision that I believe at this point in time makes sense. And hopefully it proves, it proves that it is the right decision. But anyways, I'm sure I'll make some more videos in the future about gear well, and about how we, what we're doing. But hopefully you enjoy this video if you've made it this far. If you have any questions about any of the Blackmagic cameras, again, I'm not a technical expert. I use it in a real world situation, a real world business operation. So feel free to let me know if you have any questions about any of these cameras at all. And I look forward to recording another video. And until then, I will see you all on the next one.